Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In the studio today, I have with me, right here, right now, the Tuxedo Pulse 15 notebook that Tuxedo themselves were nice enough to send over to the studio for me to review, and I'm going to give it a full review in this very video. But before I do that, a quick disclaimer. Yes, Tuxedo did send this unit to me to review, but all the thoughts in this video are mine and mine alone. I retain full creative control of all content on my channel, including this video. Now, that being said, I'm excited to check out this machine and let you guys know what my thoughts are, so let's get right into it. Now, I thought about doing a separate unboxing video, but I decided instead to include the unboxing footage in this video. And the packaging is fairly decent. It seems very professional and not all that different from computers you'd buy from other manufacturers, such as Lenovo. And inside the box, other than the notebook itself, they've included quite a few cool things in there as well. For example, there's a full color insert that's inside the box that goes over some alternative options for proprietary applications, which will surely be helpful for people that aren't already aware of those apps. When I opened the actual box for the notebook, the first thing I saw staring at me was Tux himself. This mouse pad right here is a great example of the swag they give you in the box. And even though this is a review unit, I'm keeping this mouse pad. Anyway, the notebook is here inside this plastic bag, but we'll come back to that. I'll save the best for last. The AC adapter is fairly generic. This is the section that plugs into the wall right here. And here's the power brick. It uses a barrel connector to plug into the computer. And it's not oversized or anything like that, so it's not going to take up a lot of room in your bag, which is pretty cool. Inside this bag, which was quality checked by Tux himself, we have some documentation. Although I'm not able to read it personally, but that's okay because us ADD people don't read instructions anyway. Also inside this box is a physical version of a text editor, which is pretty cool, as well as a lanyard, a pen, and also inside the box is a flash drive you can use to reload the notebook if you ever need to restore it in the future. And, well, here's another pen. I'm keeping this too. The notebook itself is in a plastic bag, and when I pulled it out, my first impression was that it felt very light. And here's the notebook in all its glory. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So here you can see the Grub Boot screen, and it lists the OS as Ubuntu. Now, it's not actually Ubuntu. It's a custom distribution by Tuxedo themselves, and I'll talk more about that a bit later. As soon as it finished booting, the system configuration screen immediately appeared, which let me set my language. After that, it gave me an opportunity to connect to my Wi-Fi network, which I did. I then set my location, and then I set up my user info. The setup screen ran through some additional configuration, and once that was done, I was presented with the desktop. And we'll get back to the custom Linux distribution in just a moment but let's take a closer look at the hardware itself. Like I mentioned earlier, my first impression was that it was very lightweight, but it didn't feel flimsy. There's very little flex, if any, and the chassis feels firm. The display itself seems plenty bright to me. It's not the brightest I've ever used, but it's totally fine. The screen quality is really good as well. Now, it may not look like it in this shot right here because I must have been having some sort of issue with my camera or maybe I didn't have my camera on the right settings to capture a screen, but it really does look great, and I have no complaints about the display at all. When the lid is closed, there's a small recess in the front that's barely visible here that allows you to pull up on the lid. And for those of you that are curious, yes, I did need to use both hands to open the display, but that's not something that bothers me. 
Although I know a few of you out there actually prefer to be able to open your notebook with only one hand, that's not the case here. But again, that's not something that is really a concern to me, but I figured I would point that out for those of you that are concerned about that kind of thing. The chassis is advertised to be made of magnesium alloy, and it does feel solid. It retains a lightweight yet solid build quality with it also being fairly thin. In fact, I would say that this machine is maybe not on the same level as a Lenovo chassis, but it's probably one of the closest that I've used in a long time. As for the keyboard, I really like this keyboard a lot. It may even be my favorite laptop keyboard ever. And the funny thing is, I'm not really sure why. For some reason, this keyboard and I, we get along quite well, and typing on it is very easy and it feels great. I even find that I make fewer mistakes on this keyboard compared to others. And that might be because the keys seem a bit larger than most laptops, not by a lot. But if you look at the keyboard, you could totally tell that the keys are somewhat on the larger side, and honestly, I really like that. The keys are flat and square shaped, and there's a decent amount of key travel as well. It doesn't have the same deep key travel as older Lenovo laptops, but it's perfectly fine for me. I also really like the fact that the tux icon on the super key, it's not a sticker, and it looks really cool. When it comes to ports, it has pretty much everything I could ever ask for. On the left hand side, we have two USB ports, an audio jack, and a micro SD slot. In addition, it has a physical ethernet jack as well, which is great for people like me that are into home lab and are periodically configuring switches in other gear. So I'm really happy to see a physical ethernet jack on this unit. On the right hand side, we have another USB port an HDMI port, and a barrel connector for the AC adapter. There's also a USB-C port on this side as well, which actually supports power delivery, so that means you can use an existing USB-C charger if you have one. On the back side of the laptop, we don't have any more ports, but we do have the air vents there for cooling the unit, and they look pretty cool to me. I don't know why. I think it's a really cool design. I like it. And speaking of cooling, the notebook does stay quite cool and I barely ever hear the fan. I'll talk more about that later. On the bottom of the unit, you can actually see the fans on the bottom through the air holes. And you could also see the long rubber feet that do a really good job of keeping the unit from sliding around your desk. Now let's talk more about the default Linux distribution that ships with a Pulse 15. As always, the first thing I did was install all the updates that were available to ensure that I was completely up to date. After a reboot, I played around with the default OS, and the distribution that ships with this notebook is known as Tuxedo OS. Here it is right here. It's a custom-built distribution that's created on top of Ubuntu's base. It features the budgie desktop environment, and some additional apps that they've added on, such as their control center, which I'll be talking about here shortly. And although I'm more of a GNOME fan, the desktop distro that they've built on top of Ubuntu is actually quite nice. I just opened up a terminal so we could see some of the release info. And what's interesting is that when you check the OS release file, it claims that we are using Ubuntu 2004.2 LTS, but this distribution is not actually Ubuntu. This isn't necessarily a problem because they've added some great customizations on top of Ubuntu's base that we'll talk about here shortly. But one potential issue is that since the OS release file claims that it's Ubuntu, it may confuse some automation tools such as Ansible since those might expect the GNOME desktop if the distribution claims to be Ubuntu, but that probably won't be a problem for very many of you, if anyone. Again, it's actually a nice setup. As for default applications, we have Firefox as the default browser. No surprise there, that's the default browser on quite a few distributions and this is no exception. And here we have the file manager that comes with the distribution, which is very effective. In addition to that, we have LibreOffice, which is actually my favorite Office suite. After all, I did use it to write my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 3rd Edition, which is available right now. End plug. 
But that just goes to show you that LibreOffice is awesome because if I was able to get a book published written through LibreOffice, then that just proves that the software is awesome and I'm glad to see it here. Now, obviously, LibreOffice is present in the majority of Linux distributions nowadays, so if it wasn't present, that would be a little weird in my opinion. But here it is, and I'm glad to see that it's included. Now, one of my favorite things about their setup is the Tuxedo Control Center, which definitely deserves some discussion. You can see the icon down here in the tray on the bottom of the screen, and if I open it, you can see immediately that it's pretty cool because it's already showing me the CPU temperature, and it's also showing me the CPU frequency. And speaking of CPU, if I bring up the About screen, So as you can see, the unit that they've sent over was equipped with an AMD Ryzen 7 4800H CPU, which has 8 cores and a total of 16 threads. Its base clock is 2.9 GHz, and it's able to boost up to 4.2 GHz. So when we look at the Tuxedo Control Center, we can see that it's currently running at 1.4 GHz, and that's great because it's only running with the power that it needs, which saves battery. And I will be talking about battery life here very shortly. But already we can see that I'm pretty much idle and the CPU is running at 32 Celsius and at 1.4 gigahertz. So it's actually very power efficient. And here we can see that the CPU fan is running at 0%. And what surprises me the most is that I've only seen the fan actually turn on at all one time the entire time this machine has been in the studio. And if I remember correctly, I think I was installing updates or something like that. I don't remember. But I barely ever hear the fan, which is great. This laptop is virtually silent. And everything you see here is with the default settings. If you go to profiles, and this is one of the things that I love most about the Tuxedo Control Center, is that you have several profiles here that are included by default, but you can actually create your own. And you can narrow down the list by those that are preset and also custom profiles as well. So I could create a new one. I'll just call it Jay's profile. And I'll go ahead and put in my super secret password to save it. And I've created my own profile so I can go back to it. And then here you can see that I can customize it quite a bit. Number of logical cores, I can actually lower that down if I'd like to do that. I could set the minimum frequency, so I can crank that all the way up to the base clock of 2.9 gigahertz if I wanted to do that. And I could also customize the fan as well. So I really like that they give the user full control over things like this. I think every Linux laptop needs to have this. I think this sets a standard for all other manufacturers to follow. And even with the default settings, like I've mentioned, this machine runs very quiet. In fact, the only machine that runs as quiet as this that I have in the studio is the Lemur Pro by System76. So here we have a 15 inch laptop that is on that level. And it also matches the Lemur Pro in battery life as well. I'm able to get at least 10 hours or so with generic usage on this machine. And by generic usage, I'm referring to browsing the web, bringing up a terminal, things like that. Obviously, if I was running virtual machines on this unit, then the battery life is going to suffer if I'm doing something intensive. But for generic use, I actually had this machine last the entire day. And even now, I don't have it plugged in. I haven't plugged it in since yesterday morning. And if I look at the battery life here, it claims that I have about two hours or so remaining, which is pretty good because again, I haven't charged it since yesterday morning. And another thing is that the control center here actually supports dark mode as well. And you know what? I'm going to leave it on that because that looks pretty cool. Now, overall performance has been really great on this machine. I haven't had any problems at all. Apps open pretty much instantaneously. I can open up a few random applications here to give you an idea of what the performance is. As you can see, it keeps up with me just fine.
Now bring up the system monitor to show you guys the performance and I'm pretty much idle other than one browser window and a few other apps. Not a whole lot going on here. But I always think that it's fun to look at the system monitor, especially when you have a bunch of logical cores like you do here. And again, I will bring up the about screen. And you can see some of the specs right here. So we have about 32 gigs of RAM in this unit. I believe it goes up to 64, if I remember correctly. And the disk that they've provided is one terabyte. And again, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H CPU, which is awesome. And the only downside I might see here is that the built-in internal GPU that's included is not going to measure up to a Radeon GPU or anything like that. So if you are heavy into gaming, this machine may not be a great choice for that. But for all other use cases, such as software engineering, DevOps, or anyone that wants a machine that is not going to slow down and can keep up with them, I think that this is actually a great fit. So I'm sure quite a few of you are actually curious about the audio quality of the built-in speakers. And honestly, they sound great, which is a big surprise to me because normally on a notebook, I'm usually disappointed by the audio quality, but I was jamming out to a Lacuna Coil track and it sounds amazing. Um, and amazing in the context of a laptop, obviously, these are built-in speakers. They're not going to shake the room or anything like that, and they're not going to compare to Bluetooth speakers, but the audio quality is actually really good. And overall, I really like this machine a lot. And it's kind of like really hard for me because I can't really find anything wrong with it, and I swear they're not paying me for this. They sent the review unit over to me, and I checked it out. I was very impressed with it. I have no complaints with this machine at all. It passed all my tests. It keeps up with me. Great sound quality, has a great display. The battery life is great. The, you know, everything about it is just awesome. And I also love the fact that this is a 15 inch laptop without a 10 key. I don't like 10 keys. It's just a personal thing, obviously, but I have a standard keyboard on this machine, which is great especially in a 15 inch form factor, which is something that I've been hoping for because the presence of a 10 key isn't going to stop me from using a notebook, but it's just one of those things I never use and just takes up wasted space. But on this machine, there isn't one. And the keyboard is very pleasant to type on as well. There's a physical ethernet jack. I can't say enough good things about this machine. So let me know what you guys think of this review, this unit or anything about Tuxedo in general in the comments down below. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you again real soon.